Hello, everyone. Let's begin our journey through the midbrain, also known as the mesencephalon, the shortest segment of the brainstem that links the hindbrain to the forebrain. In this first slide, you see a sagittal section of the brainstem highlighting the midbrain's position. Note the small canal running through it, which is the cerebral aqueduct, also called the aqueduct of Silvius. This aqueduct carries cerebrospinal fluid between the third and fourth ventricles, a vital passageway for fluid circulation within the brain. Now we have the ventral surface of the midbrain featuring two prominent columns of white matter known as the crura cerebri. These crura house major descending tracts running from the cerebral cortex down to the brain stem and spinal cord. It's an excellent external landmark that distinguishes the midbrain from the pons and medulla below. Turning to the dorsal surface, we see four rounded swellings called the colliculae, collectively referred to as the corpora quadrigemina. The superior colliculi are involved primarily in visual reflexes and the inferior colliculi in auditory pathways. This region of the midbrain is also linked to the cerebellum via the superior cerebellar peduncles, ensuring coordination between sensory input and motor activity. Moving inside, the midbrain can be divided into three main parts. One, tectum, dorsal. Two, tegmentum, intermediate. Three, crus cerebri, ventral, base. Running through the center is the cerebral aqueduct. For ease of study, we typically examine the midbrain at two levels, inferior colliculus level, superior colliculus level. However, the crus cerebri remains a constant feature in both cross sections. Let's note a few specifics. Crus cerebri, the ventral base of the midbrain, lying in front of ventral two, the substantia nigra. It's divided into three segments, medial one-sixth, contains front opontine fibers, middle two or three, carries the main corticospinal and corticobulbar, corticonuclear tracts. Lateral one-sixth includes temporopontine, parietopontine, and occipitopontine fibers. Substantia nigra, positioned between the crus cerebri and the tegmentum, it contains melanin-pigmented neurons. Dopamine produced here is transported via the nigrostriatal pathway to the basal ganglia. Degeneration of these neurons is a hallmark of Parkinson's disease. Throughout the midbrain, you'll also find the reticular formation, which extends along the entire brainstem. Here we have a cross section of the midbrain at the inferior colliculi level. Let's explore the gray matter first. One, periaqueductal gray, surrounds the cerebral aqueduct. This region includes the trochlear nucleus, CN4, which controls the superior oblique muscle of the eye. Fascinatingly, the trochlear nerve is the only cranial nerve that exits from the dorsal surface of the brainstem. The mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve was also found here, relaying proprioceptive information from the face. Two, inferior colliculus, an integral auditory relay center receiving inputs through the lateral lemniscus and sending outputs to the medial geniculate body of the thalamus via the inferior brachium. Nest is the white matter. One, decussation of the superior cerebellar peduncles. In this region, fibers crossing from one cerebellar hemisphere to the other pass through the midbrain. Two, tectospinal and rubrospinal tracts, motor pathways involved in reflexive head and neck movements, tectospinal, and fine motor control, rubrospinal. Third lemnisi, sensory bundles arranged in a curve, medial lemniscus, carries fine touch and proprioception. Trigeminal lemniscus, somatosensory signals from the face. Spinal lemniscus, pain and temperature from the body. Lateral lemniscus, auditory pathway, especially prominent at the inferior colliculus level. Fourth, medial longitudinal fasciculus, MLF, coordinates eye movements by linking cranial nerve nuclei.
Finally, we look at a cross-section at the superior colliculi level. We'll discuss gray matter at this level. 1. Periaqueductal gray. Surrounding the aqueduct, it now contains the oculomotor nucleus and the Edinger-Westphal nucleus, which provide motor and parasympathetic control to the eye, sphincter pupillae, and ciliary muscle. 2. Mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve, still present carrying proprioceptive information. 3. Superior colliculus receives visual signals from the retina via the lateral geniculate body through the superior brachium, as well as sensory inputs like the spinotectal tract. In response to these stimuli, it sends motor signals through the tectospinal and tectobulbar tract to coordinate head, neck, and eye movements. Fourth pretectal nucleus lies near the superior colliculus and plays a crucial role in the pupillary light reflex, sending signals to the edinger westphal nucleus. Five, red nucleus, characteristically red-pink due to high iron content. It receives input via cerebellorubral and pallidorubral pathways and sends output through the rubrospinal and rubrobulbar tracts. These fibers decussate in the ventral tegmental decussation of Farrell. White matter at this level presents the following. 1. Dorsal tegmental decussation of Maynard, where tectospinal and tectobulbar tracts cross. 2nd Ventral tegmental decussation of Farrell, where rubrospinal and rubrobulbar tracts cross. 3. Medial longitudinal fasciculus, MLF, continues to coordinate ocular and vestibular functions. Fourth lemnisi. Most remain, though the lateral lemniscus, auditory, is less prominent at the superior level compared to the inferior colliculus level. This completes our overview of the midbrain from its external landmarks to its complex internal organization, including the crucial cranial nerve nuclei tracks, and reflex centers. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope this detailed explanation helps you appreciate the intricate design of the mesencephalon.